We're witnessing a time where an unprecedented number of prospects are emerging out of the Oceania region, particularly Australia. While players such as Josh Giddy, Mojave King and Dyson Daniels are quickly making a name for themselves with their play, there's a junior with arguably the highest upside of the lot flying relatively under the radar. My name's Michael Hooban and today we're breaking down the game of New Zealand forward Tafara Gapare. Born in 2003, the 18-year-old forward out of New Zealand is currently in the middle of his final year of high school hoops with Scots College, located in Wellington. Most recent measurements list Kapare at 6 foot 9 with a 7 foot wingspan. He is currently committed to George Washington University for the class of 2022. The most apparent and eye-popping aspect of Gapare's game is his exceptional size and athleticism. At 6 foot 9 with a 7 foot wingspan, Gapare has the perfect dimensions for a modern forward, which he combines with an elite combination of speed, mobility and hops. There aren't many aspects of Gapare's athletic profile that aren't at an NBA level. An explosive dunker of either one or two feet Gapare is constantly playing above the rim on both ends of the court. A consistent highlight reel, it's fair to say that Gapare is the most electrifying athlete to come out of the Oceania region in recent years. Given room in transition, Gapare reaches elite speeds in the open court for his size to break out and finish plays with regularity. He combines this with an impressive handle on the move to dodge incoming defenders, making him a formidable target to stop once he gets ahead of steam. Much like Lamelo Ball's experiences as a junior afforded him the freedom to experiment and diversify his skill set. Kapari was never funneled into playing purely as a traditional big and has been given plenty of opportunity to develop his perimeter game in the half court. Kapari will often be seen handling the ball in the half court, operating out of pick and rolls and isolation situations where he uses his exceptional handle and great first step to attack the defense and finish at the rim, whether off the dribble or penetrating off closeouts. Over the last year, Gapare has added an extra level of shiftiness to his change of direction moves off the dribble, freeing up lanes to drive where he finishes with excellent footwork and great touch. He's also demonstrated a basic ability to back defenders down at times and use his size to get to the rim. While he doesn't have an advanced post game, it's a tool he can effectively use to take advantage of mismatches at his current level of play. The freedom Gapare has taken advantage of during his development is best exemplified by his ability as a passer. Displaying great confidence and creativity, Gapare is an unselfish player who likes to get his teammates involved. In transition, Gapare keeps his head up, finding cutters on the move and frequently creating easy offensive opportunities by hitting leak out runners with precise full court passes. In the half court, Gapare shows great patience probing the defense, reading the floor and flashing advanced reads with a variety of different pass types as he attacks off the dribble. He's also been able to use his vision hitting cutters as the big man operating from the high elbow. To top it all off, Gapare is a capable shooter from deep. With sound mechanics, Gapare can space the court off the ball and act as a pick and pop threat as a screener. He's not a consistent threat yet, but he's a willing shooter that doesn't lack confidence. And when the jumper is dropping, it opens up his offensive game, making him even harder to guard. Most impressively, he has shown great comfort stepping into pull-ups against sagging defenses, making them pay for going underneath ball screens. With opposition teams naturally playing in for the drive, 
Kapari's continued evolution in this area will keep defences honest and open up driving lanes. At his best, he is even showing great comfort pulling up or stepping back off the dribble, with such flashes tantalising legitimate off the dribble jump shot creation that is near impossible to guard at his size. In this last example, Gapare remarkably decelerates from a hard left-handed drive, pulling up with great balance and knocking down the mid-range jumper in a way that few prospects in the world could do at his size. Defensively, Gapare utilises his size, length and athleticism to intimidate drivers as either the primary or help rim protector. Gapare also possesses a very quick second jump, meaning he can recover from block attempts to disrupt multiple attempts in a row or quickly rise for a defensive rebound. While his physical tools alone are enough to provide a presence at the New Zealand high school level of play, he is also demonstrating extremely good timing and instincts as a shot blocker that will translate at any level. When locked in, Gapare is a high level deterrent in the paint. It's a handy tool to have on the wing, but most importantly it improves his viability in the front court, either as the 4 man or a small ball 5, particularly once his body develops. Many of the concerns that hover around Gapare's game can be attributed to the unstimulating level of competition he faces in a large portion of his games in New Zealand. Playing in the New Zealand high school circuit for Scots College, Gapare was dominant last year as a bottom age player and will face even less resistance this season as by far and away the most athletic and talented junior in the country. It's hard to blame the effort level of someone who frequently finds himself up 50 against teams half his size. Such inadequate competition is undoubtedly stagnating his growth and will only continue to encourage poor habits on both ends of the court. When Gapare has been faced with more appropriate competition, the results have been a mixed bag. In 2019, Gapare put together a strong tour for the New Zealand Basketball Academy against US competition that included Bronnie James's Strive for Greatness squad where he played with high energy and seemed to relish the challenge of tougher competition. He also represented New Zealand at the 2018 Under-15 Oceania Championship. Gapare played well, selected into the tournament's All-Star 5 award, though in their two matchups against an Australian team featuring talents such as Dyson Daniels and Josh Duach, Gapare struggled, going a combined 6 of 25 from the field. With New Zealand not attending the 2021 Under-19 FIBA World Cup and with US tours off the cards due to travel restrictions, it remains unclear whether Gapare will face any more meaningful competition in the next 12 months. One example of this issue is defensively. Though he has the physical tools to be a consistent force on both the interior and the perimeter, his physical dominance has left him behind the curve fundamentally. At the New Zealand high school level, he can swipe at ball handlers for cheap steals like here and easily recover if needed, but against tougher competition, the lack of a defensive stance and lazy effort results in him getting burned. Here, instead of giving up an easy two by swiping at the ball, he could have simply retreated and contested the shot against a much smaller offensive player. When he is locked in, Gapare has shown the ability to stay with guards defensively. Here, Gapare picks up 5-star point guard recruit Dior Johnson full court to great effect. Gapare has a similar impulsiveness as an interior defender, where he has the propensity to jump at fakes. As talented a shot blocker as he can be, Gapare often leaves shots uncontested that have no right to be, as he loads up to jump for the highlight rejection instead of simply using his size and verticality to deter attempts at the rim. While the freedom of developing his skill set in New Zealand has had its benefits, Gapare may undergo an adjustment period figuring out his role at higher levels. As defences improve, 
he may need to find a balance between his natural creativity and confidence making plays and a greater judiciousness as he finds out what works and what doesn't against stronger defences. Additionally, Gapari needs to make sure he is playing aggressively at all times. While also likely a symptom of his environment, he can occasionally settle for outside shots that teams generally like to concede him, instead of consistently attacking off the dribble where he's at his best. While Gapari has shown great flashes of shooting ability, he's still very much a project. Form-wise, Gapari shoots the ball somewhat in front of his face, with a slight hitch and a relatively flat release. While he can make shots from the perimeter, results suggest he is not yet efficient shooting the ball, and even his free throw shooting is inconsistent at best. In order to maximise his potential on-ball abilities, Gapari's ability to tweak and refine his shot over the coming years will be key. All things considered, Tafara Gapare has outstanding potential. It's hard to find anything Gapare doesn't have the ability to be great at, and yet there is still so much room for future growth. There are, however, legitimate concerns that pose a threat to his ability to be a productive player at a high level in the immediate future. It will be essential for Gapare to play at a high level of competition as soon as possible, both to quell the current question marks surrounding his game and facilitate further growth. He is currently committed to play for George Washington University next year, but given current turnover within the program, it's fair to question whether that's where he ultimately ends up. With the option to reopen his recruitment or entertain the option of turning pro, there are plenty of viable options on the table for Gapare's next step. He has a ways to go to prove himself, and it may take a while for everything to come together, but with the right situation, Gapare could eventually turn into a high-level NBA prospect, and in turn, the next generational prospect to come out of New Zealand. For further content, make sure to follow me at the following handles, as well as Mike Bain from Next Up who produced our intro video. Also, follow the Pick and Roll on socials at Pick and Roll AU and visit our website at pickandroll.com.au.